हेलो फ्रेंड द वर्ल्ड इन विच वी आर लिविंग इज रिवॉल्विंग राउंड मनी सिंस एंशंट टाइम्स इंडिया हैज बीन टॉकिंग अबाउट भूमंडलीकरण विच इम्फेसाइज ऑन द संस्कृत कूट वसुधैव कुटुंबकम विच मीन्स कंसिडरिंग ऑल द क्रिएचर्स लिविंग ऑन द अर्थ एज ब्रेड रैन दैट इज टू से नो वन हैज टू थिंक एनीथिंग बैड टू वन अनदर but mistakenly the hindi word bhumandalikaran is synonymized with the english word globalization in fact the concept of globalization is associated with a full fledged business in which one country exploits the other self interest is associated with this concept therefore in my view bhumandalikaran should not be used interchangeably with globalization in the same way as the english word religion cannot be the synonym to the hindi word dharma well this is the subject of a long discussion the topic of discussion today is related to the international monetary fund imf the imf has been established to bring economic equality in the world that no country is left behind from making progress the imf provides them with financial assistance that no country gets hit by any pandemic the imf provides them with necessary fund that no country faces a huge economic crisis and the people there do not die of hungry the imf provides them with help but this assistance is in the form of loan and not free assistance however one thing is the sure that the interest fixed against the aid provided to the needy countries is only 1 to 2% another thing is that this assistance is available only to those countries which are members of the imf there are 195 countries in the world of which 190 countries are members of the imf however roughly speaking almost all the countries are its members but now the question arises whether the imf has been able to play the top role to end poverty of the world whether the economically backward member countries have been able to utilize the amount allotted by this world organization quite sufficiently whether the imf is able to play an active role in order to deal well with any epidemic is its role to alleviate poverty from the world sufficient how much is its role to relieve the pandemic stricken world when a liquidity crisis occurs in a member country how much will it be helpful etc etc let's discuss all these in detail friend first of all let us know how the imf provides financial assistance to a needy country and how effective this assistance is the imf runs on the fund given by the top member countries the more a member country contributes to it the more dominance it will have on it you must know that the imf is a completely quota based system to understand this system well let's take the example of the central government of india the revenue collected by the government uh, in many ways is allotted to all the parts of the country through a quota system through the mps the mps of the country receive the fund as per the quota fixed for a year then the mps utilize the allotted fund for development in their areas in their constituencies but the quota is not for any individual but for the common good the quota is for fulfilling the basic needs of their constituencies for fighting against diseases for alleviating poverty in the same way the imf functions imf fixes the quota for all its member countries and any member country can avail itself of this quota as per needs now a question arises how the quota of each member country is fixed by the imf friend this quota depends on the economic soundness and the amount of exports of the member countries 
and at the same time depends on the contribution it gives to the IMF. The IMF indicates the quota in the form of SDRs which is a basket of five top currencies of the world and one SDR is determined by all the five currencies in terms of US dollar. Right now one SDR is equal to 1.41 US dollars. I have given detailed information related to this in the previous video. Please watch it. Now let us know how the quota is allotted to each country and what is the role of the quota. Who has the maximum quota and who gets more benefit from this quota? Is there any fault in the quota allocation? In case there is any fault then what is the fault? We will take answers to all uh, one by one. Friend as we know that the IMF works on the quota system. The US has got the highest quota among all member countries. Look at this paragraph in which the US has got the highest quota share of 17.46% and in this way it has 82,994.2 lakh and its voting percentage is also higher than that of all other member countries. Even if any minor revision is to take place in the system of the IMF, the voting percentage of the member countries must reach at least 85%, which is not possible without the US, as it has a voting share of 16.52%. And even if the voting share of all countries is to be taken together, it will go less than 85%. Therefore, America has a veto, which it does not want to lose under any circumstances. China's voting percentage is 6.09 and that of India is 2.64%. And one big thing is that if there is a big global economic crisis, then the countries with big quota will take the largest amount of total SDRs allotted. And uh, all other low quota member countries will get a little, which will be inadequate to meet their requirements. It will be just a drop in the ocean for such countries. Now, you can understand yourself that the IMF, which was meant to eradicate poverty from the world, uh, will uh, be relevant. Which was created to bring economic equity in the world, will it ever fulfill its purpose with this quota system? No, never. This was the reason why in the last year, in 2020, the US and India opposed the IMF's allocation of 500 billion SDRs for its member countries to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. These two countries rightly said that the lion's share of the amount allotted would go to the top countries and the remaining member countries will not be able to fight this pandemic due to insufficient funds or quota. But there is one thing remarkable here that a self-dependent country does not wish to take loan from IMF until and unless uh, that country is completely financially helpless or is going to be helpless. This is because taking a loan from IMF means that there is a huge economic crisis in that country or the country is going to, uh, to, uh, go, going to in, incur into heavy a, a financial crisis and the FIS and FDIs will stop coming into the country. This will worsen the economy of that country further. India took a loan from the IMF in the 1990s when it was undergoing a huge economic crisis. But since then, it has not taken loan, but now it is playing a role as a potential financial contributor to IMF. And it is expected that Indian rupee INR is likely to join the IMF basket of SDRs in the coming few years, in the same way as the Chinese currency renminbi joined it in 2015. Talking about Pakistan, Pakistan received 6 billion US dollars from the IMF in the form of bailout package in 2020 and then used its quota to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Since this country has obtained a loan from IMF, the foreign investors will think little to invest here and its economy will further deteriorate. So friend, in this way, 
you know how IMF works and how much importance it keeps. In the next video, we will know what eligibility should be required to join SDR basket of IMF. Please comment. Thank you.